better it's all the ai and speaking of that we are live chevy i see uh i see you on instagram here just pumping out the show for tonight and uh i see a bit of a different look i see you sporting your edmonton oilers t-shirt uh yes i've got a feeling there's a story behind that because in all my years i know you played in edmonton i've never seen you in the oilers gear what's the story Uh, for uh, for for the record i have worn oilers gear uh when i lived there i went to a couple of games i knew some of the guys i went to a game last year but this you know i'm not i'm not i won't consider myself an oilers fan in fact i'm not an oilers fan i'm not a flames fan but I'm wearing the Oilers shirt because I lost a bre- a bet. A, not a bet, a bet. Um, my girlfriend is a diehard Oilers fan, and uh, I lost a bet this week. I, I, I lost a bet. And it's not the bet you would think I lost. It's not the bet you would think I lost. So you, you might think it's the Flames, Oilers, because I'm from Calgary, or I live in Calgary. It was not that. That's not the bet. I was relying on the Flames to beat the Oilers so that the 1967-68 Montreal Canadiens record for consecutive wins by Canadian team would remain intact. And uh, the Flames failed me miserably, Sheldon. Miserably. Miserably. Really? You let them get the record? That team? Those guys? Come on. Uh, You know, anyhow, I I was pretty upset about that. And uh, But that's not the focus of our show tonight. Tonight, we got a great show for you on the ride. Uh, as you see, it's our second week in a row. We're going to try and take this weekly. Uh, and uh, tonight's ride, we're going to talk about those NFL divisional mashups that we saw this weekend. Uh, we're going to have Ian Hill. Uh, Ian Hill, the founder of the NGBN TV network. But he's not just a network exec. There's a reason and a purpose for everything he does. We're going to talk to him because his story is fantastic. Uh, and uh, he's definitely putting this all together. And we want to. Uh, uh, introduce Ian to our fans and our world. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about pop culture, a little bit of nasty thoughts, uh, a little bit of CFL news, and then uh, preview uh, next week's uh, championship conference championship game. So all that's coming up tonight and more right here on the ride. So you lost uh, you lost a bet with Britt, yes. and you're wearing your Oilers gear. Now, one of the things, I did watch that game, and I was uh, hugely disappointed by the Flames' performance, uh, kind of as what game one is expected. But it was a nasty me, the sto- game. The was, story. Was, yeah. Sorry. The story of the game. Yeah, it was a nasty game. But the story of the game were those god-awful brown pants. Now, is Brittany, uh, is Britt making you wear the brown pants here tonight as well? Or Like, look at that. That is, that's horrible. Now, I like... I like the jerseys, but those pants, I just don't get. Are you wearing the brown pants? First of all, I don't know why every show opens with what type of pants I'm wearing. First of all, you know what pants I'm wearing. It's either no pants or shorts. I get. I don't know this this running pants joke every week, but 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 the Oilers pants, those things were disgusting. Like I said, I'm wearing the shirt because I lost the bet to Brittany. And if you're listening right now, Brittany, listen. I, I, I went to an Oilers game with you last year. I enjoyed it. Rogers Place or Rogers Center or Rogers Stadium, Rogers Arena, whatever they call it. It is the one of the most fantastic places to watch a hockey game. But it still doesn't match my love for the Montreal Canadiens. And it still doesn't match uh, growing up in Montreal, a fan of the greatest sports franchise in North America with 24 Stanley Cup victories. The last team in canada to win a stanley right. cup is the montreal canadians and i have a souvenir here from the old montreal forum when a 10 year old little chevy was with papa chevy watching the warm-up watching the players take shots shots after shots on patrick waugh claude lemieux uh matt's naslin larry robinson bob ganey Guy carbono chris chelios you name it it was hall of famers and my forehead took this puck <laughs> off the face, and I missed the game because I was in the medics tent. Is that, is that is that honestly here. is that a true story? I've never heard that one before. Yes, it's a oh true story. All I saw was this. I, I we were sitting at the corner. Claude Lemieux. I, I knew it was Claude Lemieux. He took a shot off the glass. I didn't see where it went, and all I saw was my dad's hand, the guy next to me's hand, and pink. 
and I took this one square to the face. And from that day on, I was cemented as a Montreal Canadiens fan. You are ne- It's in my blood. It's always more of a Boston guy myself, but I, I get. Ah, oh, come on, <laughs> Boston! Don't even go there. Let's go. No, I love. You know I love Patrick Wall. I always fancied myself as a goalie when I was a kid. I love. I love. Who happens to all... be the new head? New head coach of the Islanders. I saw that. Week. I saw that. Finally, getting a second chance. We'll be talking second chances a little bit more in the show here as well. I think. Um, yes, but you know, right now, you know, outside outside of uh, some NHL news and story about little Chevy taking a puck to the Chicklets. Um, a lot of NFL action going on this weekend, Chev. Where do you want to start? Well, I want to start first of all by thanking our sponsors, Dream Reach Achieve, for sponsoring the show. And we got We Drone. Uh, remember, we're launching live. Uh, the sneak peek for NGBN TV is January 29th. And if yeah. you want to be a show sponsor, uh, give us give us a shout. We got we got a sponsor sheet. You can take a look. There's many ways you can get on board the ride, and we're gonna have fun. We're taking this weekly now. At least we're trying to, and I think we're there. Uh, there's going to be some big announcements coming up. In fact, like we said, Ian Hill's going to come up uh, to talk a little bit later. But right now, I want to start in Buffalo. Yeah. Canada's team. The <laughs> the, the, the favorite underdog. The, the, the team of destiny. Uh, everyone was rooting for the Bills. Everyone thought that the Bills had that home field advantage. They beat the Chiefs earlier this year. Patrick Mahomes never won a game in the playoffs on the road, blah, blah, blah. They they built this as the modern-day uh, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Sheldon. The Chiefs did exactly what I thought they would do. They brought Taylor Swift to the building, and they left with the victory. <laughs> well maybe jason kelsey's uh, uh shirtless episodes throughout the game might have had something to do with that as well but you know and, and here's the thing going into going into this week like i learned from the brady days you never bet against the goat right and tom brady's the goat uh patrick mahomes is well on his way to being a very special guy in in you know in the legendary lore of the nfl uh, but that said, you know what? He's also at that point of the career where I'm almost, I get a little bit chiefed out, right? They are so good. They win all the time. I'm not a chief hater. I love Mahomes. I love Kelsey. I love all those guys. But I was really hoping to see Buffalo show up and do something special. Just that magic in that city. Could you imagine it? And, and you look back at the game and it came out dead even they fought they scratched both defenses showed up both quarterbacks mostly showed up and they took it right to the end of the game where Buffalo in their home stadium has a chance to tie it up to take it to overtime and Chevy what happens Jim Nance calls it wide Wide right right wide wide right right. um and and uh, he said he said wide right two of the most dreaded words in buffalo have surfaced again not since uh the scott norwood uh wide right uh in the 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 bills uh dynasty days um but yeah that that game uh it was exactly what it was billed uh billed part of the pun to be we knew it was going to be the game of the week, and that's why we come out the gates with it. It ends 27-24 on the missed kick. We'll talk about that later. But, yeah, you said mo- both quarterbacks showed up, but Patrick Mahomes showed up just a little bit more. I mean, he was 17 for 23, 215 yards, two touchdowns, and most importantly, zero interceptions. Yeah. Okay, zero interceptions. And then you have Josh Allen. He had a great game. He did a lot of rushing. He had two TDs on the ground. So he was equal. Uh, the Bills made some questionable plays early in the game. They went for a fake punt. Yeah, uh, A lot of people questioning the coaching staff. I think the players on the field uh, it took advantage or, or tried to take advantage of a situation. They saw that the Chiefs lined up with 10 men, and they probably have something built into the count because you always count how many guys on the field. They probably had something built into the count. When they see a mismatch, uh, 11 on 10, that uh, they could call a fake punt. Now, I'm not sure if the coaches have to confirm it, but uh, that was early in the game, and I think it was a miscue. It was a miscue because I feel, I looked at the film, we talked about it off air, they ran it to the wrong side. They ran it to the short side of the field. They had a linebacker scraping over the top, which makes it a lot harder for a guy to find a hole if he's running in a condensed space. I think, personally, if the Bills would have run that play to the wide side of the field, 
they would have had a lot more opportunity for success. But unfortunately, they run it. it it's unsuccessful. The Chiefs turn around, get some points off it. Uh, um, and and look, not much of a momentum shifter, but shoot, you, you know, every possession was going to be a difference maker in, in that game. In the, in the playoffs, anytime you turn over the ball in your own half of the field, that's a big time momentum. And yeah, I think I, I I think it was absolutely just a call on the field, right? They, they show up with 10 players. You got somebody out there accountable for counting that. It was there. But it, I watched it. So earlier this week, I actually, we watched that play together. You kind of explained to me how everything broke down. And it was that linebacker that got pulled over to the side right before the snap. And I think it was yep. at that point that they were at the past, past the point of no return. Um, yep. They left the guy free on the, on the, to the field and they just committed up. But Everybody in the NFL is so disciplined. If you take a look on that punt return team, first of all, you know, is fourth and four, and you've got everybody in the back of their mind thinking, watch the fake, right? The words you always hear when you go on the field in those settings, watch the fake. Yep. Um, they go off and they reach hard to the to the boundary, and everybody just flowed with them. Everybody did their job. Everybody yep. did what they're supposed to do in the NFL. Um, and I'm just going to go back to my old roommate at Iowa State, Mike Sackless. When he used to play Madden when it first came out, and I used to run, love running fake punts, he always told me, your punter is not your quarterback, and your up back is not your running back. If you're yeah. going to go for it on fourth down, put the proper unit in there. And, uh, yeah, they got burned. Did it? Did that cost them the game, Chef? Nah, I don't, no. I don't think it cost them the game. No. <laughs> but, but, but the play that did cost them the game, or at least the opportunity to, to, to tie the game, was that miss kick at the end? Uh, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, what did you think when you watched it? Did you think it was a gimme? Oh. Yeah, I, no, I mean, it was just channeling Scott Norwood all over again. I mean, I still have trauma from that back in the day, but as a guy, like, and I know there's been a lot now said on social media, the guys receiving death threats. I, I remember Paul McCallum, I can't remember what year it was when he missed a similar kick in the playoffs, uh, for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders north of the border. And, and the community got so mad, they actually pulled, some guy pulls a truck up and dumps, he tried to dump manure on Paul McCallum's front yard, but he missed and he dumped it on the neighbor's yard. And that's how pissed people get when it comes down to a kicker. Now, any guy during the game could have made a mistake uh, and some guys did make mistakes. But I'm t although I don't condone dropping off manure or death threats to a kicker after a mistake, tell me how that feels in the locker room because I would be upset when it's a makeable kick you've got one job you've done it all year come on man like well the only thing i could relate and uh be before i relate this story um i i, I jenna ganji our, our great producer uh she she was in regina for that she was driving the manure truck apparently that dumped it on the neighbor's <laughs> lawn <laughs> and rubio says it was a great snap the long snapper can do only do so much i agree chris and to everyone else following we got rubio we got anthony cobbs we got michael hussinger from all the way down in new zealand a lot of you following thanks for being here tonight but what i was going to say sheldon in the locker room the story i can relate and i know we got to move on in 2007 the Calgary Stampeders were making a run in Regina to, to uh, win the game. We had just scored, and we went for an onside kick. We attempted an onside kick. We recovered the kick, okay, and we were on fire. And our kicker, Sandro DeAngelis, at that time, he could make kicks from 50 yeah. yards. All we had to do was advance it five yards. We would have we got a kick to win the game. The player on the opposite side, that all he had to do was run backwards. Stand up, do nothing. Yep. Okay. And and I know his name. His name was Cedric Williams. He's Ooh. a great guy. Yep. He, he he crossed that line. Okay. And and why I'm why why I'm I'm relating this is because you said how does that feel in the locker room? We lost the game. Okay. We lost the game. Now I'm not going to say that that play lost us the game because I mean we didn't get a possession and even if we got the ball back, who knows what we would have done? But that play prevented us from going any further. And we all went to the locker room, and Cedric was crying. He was upset in the corner. And I remember Brandon yeah. Browner. Now, if you know Brandon Browner, he was an all-pro CFL quarterback, went to the NFL, played in, uh, played in the Legion of Boom in Seattle afterwards, uh, uh, won, a, won a Super Bowl with Seattle, won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. He was in the locker room, and he, he had no mercy on Cedric. He was telling him, shut up. We don't need you crying in here. Uh, it, it, it wasn't a pretty sight, but when you're a professional athlete, one, guys, even in the CFL, we don't get paid a ton, but you get paid to do your job. And 
you got to be held accountable by your teammates and by yourself. And it's okay to be called out when you don't do your job. It happens. But the thing about death threats and taking it to that other level, I think people feel so connected to athletes these days. And that's, that's the good and the bad of everything athletes do, whether it's podcasts, social media, uh, uh, endorsements. People feel like they know them, but they will turn on you in a heartbeat, Sheldon. They'll turn on you in a heartbeat. And that got ugly. And it's going to be the story of the winter for but, uh, for Tyler Bass. But, but, but for Tyler Bass, the fans that did step up, uh, today there was a campaign, Chiefs fans and Buffalo fans yep. unite, raised $100,000 for his charity for Stray Cats. And uh, I think that's a good Is that what it was, Stray Cats? Stray Cats. Uh, that was a rock band. You know, yeah. Rock band. He, he he still he still missed the kick though, Chev. That's a hard one, man. That's yeah, a hard yeah, one. You know, what, Bob, right? You, you know what doesn't miss the three hundred pound poetry. There we go, Janet. And I think you it's time that to up. hit it. We are taking a big step. We are giving it a try for a second week in a row. You get a new ride. The Bills and the Chief lived up to the hype. But the fans were robbed of OT when Nets called Ride Right. The Lions won again. On the Bucks, they showed no pity. And the party rolls on and on in Detroit, Rock City. The rest of the games ended just how we thought. Ravens and 49ers win while their opponents tried hard, but they lost. Then Chevy lost a bet. And now he's wearing Oilers blue because the Flames just could not show up that night. And the historic Canadians record, well, it just got screwed. Well, we are the 300-pound poets. And tonight, actually, I think my rhymes really did suck. But it's so late at night. And I don't give any credence to your opposition of my prowess in rhyming. Um, and I got a puck. <laughs> oh, see how I did that? Nice. Oh. You tied it together. <laughs> tied it together. Oh, there um, you go. So thanks for listening tonight. We're on that NGBN.TV network. Soon to be on Roku TV, Amazon Fire, all your connected devices. We're on YouTube tonight, Facebook Live, LinkedIn. Thank you for joining us, everyone that's here. Leave some comments. We'll read them out. Join us in the chat. Sheldon, uh, a couple of other games. Where do you want to go next? Well, let's jump into... Uh... Let's jump into San Francisco because San Francisco Green Bay was a, a, a absolutely a fascinating matchup for me. Right here, you've got uh, Green Bay looking like world beaters against Dallas, coming in hot, a bunch of young no name receivers, and everybody's just peaking at the right time. But they're going against the juggernaut uh, San Francisco 49ers with Brock Purdy. And now the talk the whole year has been: What are the 49ers? Are they a compilation of a bunch of great parts? Is Brock Purdy have what it takes to get him? Um, uh, get him, you know, advancing him through the playoffs. Can he get him to the Super Bowl? And you know what? Early on, Chef, it was uh, it was a rainy day in San Francisco, and he struggled. And I had this. I'm I'm, I'm an Iowa State guy. I'm a big Brock Purdy guy, so, as you guys know. Um, but you start getting that kind of sixth sense in your feeling, like when you have a young quarterback without that much playoff experience, does that bye week come into effect? You know, Sheldon, uh, they came in. The, the the 49ers to me are this team. Whatever they do in the playoffs, this is the team they are. They're the team that when their quarterback got healthy, went back, and AC's not going to like this, went back to Philly and spanked the hell out of the team that beat them in the playoffs when they didn't have a quarterback last year. Like, they made a statement early on, so much of a statement that at that point, people might recall that Philadelphia was being talked to. I mean, I think they were almost, they were close to undefeated at that point. I can't remember what point in the season was, but they were being talked at as the Super Bowl uh, uh, favorites. Jalen Hurts was, man, he was on fire. The 49ers go in and spank them and then laid out the blueprint for the rest of the NFL and the, and, and the Eagles were never the same. So you don't sleep on the 49ers. Yeah, they, they got off to, to a slow start against Green Bay. But you know what? Every team this weekend kind of got off to a slow start. Whether you look at the Lions, you look at the Ravens, everyone's – this year, the league for parity was the most I've seen. Because even the Chiefs got spanked by, by the Broncos when the Broncos were bad. 
The Broncos got better towards the end of the season, but that game against the Chiefs was a statement game. So there was a lot of that going on this year. But when I see Brock Purdy, the weapons he had, and he didn't even have Debo Samuel, okay? And he even said here, for us to capitalize like that was huge. Uh, and especially for him uh, and his confidence. I mean, and speaking of his confidence, I mean, he, here's a guy that was injured in the offseason. They were talking about, and this came out this week, about bringing in Tom Brady to replace him. Yeah. Or, or at yeah. least to fill in for him. That, you know, that's got to feel a little bit weird for a guy. And, 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 and yet, here he is in the playoffs taking control. The, the thing with Brock Purdy, it's always going to be if he misses an easy throw or he throws a pick, Everyone's always going to go to that little thumb back of the head that, ah, oh, that's what you get when you give a bunch of money to an undrafted guy and they go, they go right back to that. Whereas, I mean, anyone that's a high draft pick as a quarterback, it's like they get a, they get a longer leash show to yeah, speak for sure. But everyone's waiting for that long shot. Your favorite quarterback, they're waiting for him to fail. So they could say, see, we told you, why did you get rid of, of of uh, Garoppolo and and, and uh, Trey Lance and all the rest of the right, guys, right? right? Why did you settle for this guy? Well, and just put yourself in the position of the GM at the end of last year, because like, let's face it, Purdy was awesome. Like he went undefeated, and it wasn't until he was injured, and even after he's injured, he still came back in to hand off the ball at the end of the game because there's nobody else to do it. He's the real deal. But as a general manager, that's pretty hard to stake your future on your uh, uh, Mister of Relevant draft pick. But, you know, I, th I think he's doing a great job. I'm excited to see the matchup next week. I think we'll talk more about that. The other two games we saw, Detroit Lions, Tampa Detroit, Bay. Yeah. You know what? Detroit did what I thought they would do. Again, off to a slow start, but in that second half, man, they they, they, they cut it open. They cut yeah. it up. And, and they're riding a wave. Like, the 49ers cannot sleep on what uh, Detroit is bringing. Uh, Goff is playing awesome. Amon Ra is playing awesome. Their defense, their defense is, 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 is they're not playing awesome, but they're playing well. Uh, they're they're playing playoff good, and uh, you know uh, I, I'm liking that matchup next week. I am liking or uh, this weekend, I guess coming up. I'm really liking that one. And then finally, uh, you know we're gonna have to get their break here, but you know wrap it up, Sheldon. Houston Texans Ravens. What you, what'd you think? And you know uh, nothing, Burger. That was that was exactly what you wanted to see, right? The Ravens showed up and they played Ravens football. They look good. They were sharp. They were ready to go. Uh, nothing against Houston. I mean, Houston. Houston's already. I mean, they're already in Disneyland, right? If I'm if I'm a if I'm a Texans fan right now, they've already uh, superseded any any dreams that I had from this year. C.J. Stroud is a real deal. Uh, every everybody wins in that situation, and and uh, now it's going to be onwards and upwards to uh, to the next week to settle some uh, to see what's coming next. But uh, yeah. yeah, with us, Chef, we are running a little bit late here, so we're going to go to break. Uh, right now, but uh, just want to uh, thank you guys again for listening and remind you, you guys can find us on all our socials at Chevy and Nasty. You can find us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, soon to be LinkedIn, and soon to be streaming live on the Roku platform. Uh, guys, with that, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, uh, the legend, Ian Hill. <laughs> Attention, gentlemen of distinction. Introducing NGBN.TV, the television network designed exclusively for men in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. Your go-to destination for entertainment that speaks to you, inspires you, and celebrates the incredible journey of manhood. And here's the exciting news. NGBN.TV is coming to Roku, Apple TV, Amazon, and your favorite mobile devices. Whether you're a sports enthusiast, seeking self-improvement, or just looking for a good laugh, NGVN.TV has got you covered. Entertainment, inspiration, brotherhood. Coming soon to Roku, Apple TV, Amazon, and mobile devices. NGVN.TV, where men thrive.
Hey, NGBN, it's Brian Jodis with Pick Up The Six Productions. Join us here at Pick Up The Six as we introduce you to the men and women among us who go above and beyond through service, purpose, and impact. Whether it's travel in the United States or right here from our studios, we can't wait to pick up the six with you. All right, we are back. And yeah, please, please do take the opportunity uh, to check out Brian Jonas. What a great dude, uh, not just in the podcast space, but in our network uh, of uh, people we've come to know. Uh, associate. He, he is, in fact, everyone that's associated with this network are our top tier people. And the network, like we say, is come to you January uh, on all connected yeah, yeah. devices. Uh, we're going to be there. Thanks for joining in tonight. If you got any comments tonight, any questions, put them in the comments section. Uh, right now, you know, we're talking about top tier individuals, top tier people that we're associated with in the network. Well, uh, we're bringing you the top, top tier of the guys associated with the network. The one who started it all, uh, Mr. Ian Hill uh, of uh, Season to Save a Life. And it says it right there. He's on a mission to save men's life. Uh, welcome to the show, Ian Hill. Are you there? Hey, guys. Yay. How are you? How are you? Thank you for having me. No, oh, thanks for coming on, Ian. Well, Ian. Well, I, I, I got to tell you before we start, now I understand what happened to you, Chevy. That puck to the head as a young kid. <laughs> right? Now it all is clear. It all makes sense, doesn't it, Nasty? It yeah, all it makes sense. The puck to the head. That's a great story. It's and it's a true story. It you, it, it you know what? I'm going to tell you something. The only problem with that story is this, this is the puck, but it's not. It's actually not the puck that hit me. Okay, the puck that they use in warm up are all black. Okay, so I have that one, but when I got hit and I got put in the infirmary in those days, you know, they didn't have all the nice TVs, flat panels. I was sitting in a dark room. They went to get me one from the referee's freezer that they use in the game. So this is a game puck from that game that I got hit by Claude Lemieux. Uh, but let's move on to your story, Ian. Um, I came across you last year after yeah. doing a podcast with our colleague, Chris Rubio. Who Chris Rubio. To listening tonight. And he has a great podcast, by the way, called The Rubio Method, also on our network, and Decades. Decades is a fantastic show. If, you, if you're listening tonight or watching uh, uh, after we go live, you got to check out decades. It's a round table discussion. They talk about all kinds of things, but I met you through Rubio. We talked, you know, she Chevy and nasty. We we're, were, we were getting the band back together. We were looking for a home and a platform. We wanted to be, have a little bit more reach. And we had a couple of options locally, but we really wanted to do something big. And then you come along and, and, and you talk about the season to save a life before we even got into network dial. We talked about the season to save a life because you wanted to learn about long snapping. Can you take us back a little bit and tell the folks how you got into the season to save a life? And if you could find a way to do it faster than I would, because I just go <laughs> on and on. Well, I, uh, at the age of 50, I walked downstairs and told my family that I was going to take my own life. Ironically for all of our good friends in Canada, I had just been nominated prime minister, social innovator of the year. And two weeks after that, I went downstairs and told my family that I didn't want to live anymore. Who can explain the human mind? Who can explain depression and trauma, unresolved issues? I went through a couple year journey in the darkness and in the wilderness. And when it came out of that, I knew a couple of things. One, I knew I wanted to kick the shit out of depression. But I also knew for me to be healthy, I had to change some things. And I had to change the way I ate. And I had to change the way that I dealt with my thoughts. I had to change my physicality. And uh, I had to change the people that I was around. And I'm one of those kind of guys that needs a big quest. I need, to be, I need to be challenged in a big way. I had broken a world record a few years before. So I thought to myself, what could I do to bring hope to men that were going through what I was going through? And so I decided that, well, maybe I could go and break the world record as the oldest man to play Division I college football in the States. And I thought about different positions. I thought about what I would play. I had coached on the high school and college level way, way back in the day. 
And I thought about what could I do? And I thought, you know, long snapping is something I might be able to master. So at about 11 o'clock, actually about this time of night, I sent a, a, a note, an email to a guy named Chris Rubio, who you mentioned earlier, the number one long snapping coach in the world. He is the best of the best. 1,700 kids he's put in Division One programs in the United States and colleges, and he's probably half the guys in the NFL have gone through his program. So I reached out to him and said, hey, you know, my name's Ian. I want to bring, uh, I want to bring awareness to the alarming suicide rate amongst middle-aged men. They're 70% more likely to take their own life. Um, and I hear you're the number one long snapping coach, and I'd like to be a long snapper. And... I thought, I'll hear from him in a day, two days, three days. And sure enough, 10 minutes later, my phone, bing. <laughs> like, basically, huh, what? So we get on the phone the next day. And a few weeks later, I traveled up to his uh, training facility in Lewiston, Idaho. And that began a journey of trying to play college football. I tried out at a number of different schools in 2022. And then in 2023, last year, I had the opportunity to play at Antelope Valley College, where I earned the starting long snapping position. Certainly, Chris had a big, big part in helping me get into that school and play there. And uh, it was it was an amazing experience. Uh, unfortunately, I tore my rotator cuff and we had a little injury, but now we're getting ready to go play ball uh, again this season and hopefully this time make it through the year and complete the process. So let's back up a second, Ian. So you, so you, you sign with Antelope Valley College and uh, here you are, 57-year-old guy, Walking the, the you know the Rodney Dangerfield back to school, uh, <laughs> you know doing high diving boards and cannonballs off the high platform. Like, yeah. how do you walk in and how do you how do you how do you like, like like what was it like? You know, you got seven. You, my son's seventeen years old. He's upstairs eating Cheetos and playing uh, uh, Fortnite. How do you connect with those guys? You know what? It was amazing. I I came. I was originally going to come in when the practice started but they had summer training going on so i wanted to get there as quick as i could i was in chicago illinois when i got the opportunity when coach jay and uh, coach chad called me and said we want you and not only do we want you well you're going to be the you know ls number one right long snapper one from day one when you get there i was like hey i better get my ass down there so i get down there it's 120 degrees in lancaster california you know and we're doing four hour summer practices the guys embrace me immediately Immediately, Coach Chad, the special teams coach, was incredibly professional, you know, treated me like gold coach Jay, the head coach, very kind, because they were in the spirit of what we were trying to do. We were trying to bring awareness to the alarming suicide rate. We were trying to destigmatize the conversation. And the young men, because they're between 19 and 21 years old, they embraced me from the beginning. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, they had some nicknames for me, you know, Tomb Dodger. That was one of them, Tomb Dodger. That was unapproved. That was an unapproved nickname. An unapproved nickname. Uh, Relic. Relic was one of the nicknames. Relic. That was approved. I would deal with Relic. And one day we were scrimmaging, and like all good long snappers do, you know, Randy, you and you and Nasty, you guys played on the defensive line. You weren't just a long snapper exclusively, but us guys that are long snappers exclusively, this is what we do on the sideline. Right, we got our hands like this, and we're just sitting back, we're just watching the show. That's what we're doing. This mm, probably 225 running back comes around the corner and he's beeline towards me out of bounds, and I'm standing there like this. But we lost you. Oh, no, we it lost looked as though I just stood hard. It looked as though I stood hard and, and he bounced off me because. I weigh about 215. I'm pretty strong in the gym. And he bounced off me. And all of a sudden, all the guys start yelling, silverback, 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 <laughs> right? He's a silverback. Oh. What they didn't realize was I couldn't get the hell out of the way. So I just stood there and figured I'd take my chance. And so <laughs> it was a tremendous I, 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 experience. Uh, the, the young men were phenomenal. The coaches were phenomenal. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, I got hurt. You know, I... I tried. They tried. We tried to train through it. We tried to to, to play through it. And I, a torn rotator cuff, a neck impingement. I w I just couldn't snap. I couldn't hold a football. Uh, so it was it was challenging in that sense. So we I love it. I, I I call that the old man strength, by the way. But um, you know, so our network really is geared to guys forties, fifties, and sixties. And here's here's what I've got to ask you because I've been on that sideline. I've been in that locker room. I've played in those stadiums when I was 
up until I was 32 years old. What did that feel like when it actually came time to go out there and compete? Like, cause I know in your mind, like all of our minds are like, I've got it. I can do this. Did you find that your body was able to perform at the level that your mind wanted it to? Did you, you know, belong up there? I'll tell you nasty in the summer. No, I lost. I, I came in LS one and I lost the spot. And coaches are saying to me, like, what happened to you? We saw your film. And frankly, it was, I, I couldn't do it. You know, four hours, wait, weight room, and then we're on the field. And it's 100, you know, it's 120 degrees. The wind, hot wind is blowing with the AstroTurf. We're out there from four to seven in the afternoon. I struggled in the summer. I struggled. And then, you know, I had to do a gut check. You know, why am I here? Like, why am I here? I'm here. These guys are here for their dreams. I'm here to help people who believe that life is so bad they don't want to be here anymore. So I had to do a deep, deep gut check. And I remember talking to Rubio and talking to Randy and talking to others because I, I didn't have it. I made the mistake of being happy to be there. Hey, I'm here. Look at me. Woo! I'm old man. Look at what I'm doing and playing. And then I had to make a decision that I was there to play football, that I was there to start, and then nobody was going to take my starting job away from me. And, we and had, when, we I got back into, when I got back into that mindset, then I rallied and earned the starting spot back as we went into preseason training. And sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, but we got some video of you uh, snapping at Antelope Valley. Let's see if we can pull oh, that this up. This is the greatest video of all time, but... Ready, ready, set. Ready, ready, set. Race is out. I love it. Race is out right on the money. Come on, man. 12 o'clock every time. <laughs> so, so, so we're going to move on because we want to get to the network. But where are we at? with the season to save a life because you, you've got your, you've got a lot going on. One, you know, you and I, you're, you're now in Calgary with your uh, uh, lovely fiance, Jenna, who happens to be producing our show. She's awesome. Uh, you, you're here. Um, um, you know, you're snapping. We get together once in a while, snapping. You're trying training like two times a day, three times a day. Sometimes you're taking care of that injury. You're getting ready. Where are we at with the football journey that will, that will result in, people watching you run downfield and you'd be like, wow, if he could do that, I, from where he came from, I can't do something to do. Where are we at? Uh, two things. The injury is, it was a significant injury and there's no way around that. I, if my, my left arm, uh, 9,500 pound incline dumbbell bench press, my right arm, maybe 65 pounds. So this is a significant injury. And I am doing it right. I'm trying to do it right. Come back and ease in. I've snapped some, but only slow, slow snapping. The other day, Jen and I went out. We full snapped for the first time. And I was good and sore for three or four days after. So my plan is to play college football this coming fall. I've got, I reached out, I've reached out to a number of schools that have been following the journey, saying, hey, I'm still going. I'm still at it. So my plan is to play college football. Unfortunately, I had been invited to compete at the National Scouting Combine in their all-star game. But because it's an NFL-sanctioned event, the NFL had to approve my participation, and they denied my participation. And why did they deny it? Because they said I wasn't draft eligible. So that I'm not deterred by that. We're going to play college football this year. That's it. We're going to play college football in 2024, and we're going to finish the season. 2022, I tried out. Nobody let me play. 2023, I tried out. I got opportunity to play, but didn't finish. 2024, I'll finish. And when I finish, I'll be 59 years old, which means it'll just be that much damn harder to break the record. That's awesome. That's Well, you know that we're pulling for you. You know that I'm helping you out any way I can. But, you know, speaking of finishing, you know, this, this uh, three-way conversation here and us – uh, being on the network almost didn't happen because if we go back to where we met you and we started talking about getting the ride on the NGBN network, you were in Troshu, Alberta. Okay. And you were coming to meet Sheldon and I, people don't yeah. know this story. This is a fantastic oh, story. 
you were coming to meet Sheldon and I, and uh, we are on with with Ian Hill. If you're just tuning in, we we're, we we're, you were coming to meet us in Calgary, and then tell us what happened. Tell us what happened. I was, uh, unbelievable. I, 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 I was on my way to meet you from the good people of Trochu, Alberta. For some of you that don't know, I've been in some 600 Canadian communities. Canada is my second home. It's like a mother to me. The U.S. is my dad. Canada is my mom. And I was coming uh, from Trochu and being, being perfectly frank, working really, really hard and being really, really tired. And I kind of nodded off and my vehicle that I was in kind of hit, I uh, was on the embankment on a snowy day and I, I hit the approach. And when I hit that approach, I sailed in the air and I can remember thinking to myself, oh, well, this will be interesting how this lands. And when I landed, I hit the ceiling, split open my head and I'm out in the middle of nowhere, car completely totaled and I'm out of it. And this is true, uh, Chevy and Nasty. I'm thinking to myself, well, uh, somebody will come along. I'll get cleaned up. I'll still be able to meet the boys. It'll all work itself out. I mean, that was going through my head. And then blood is pouring down my face. And so I grabbed a sweatshirt, put it on the top of my head. And by some miracle, the director of emergency services out of Olds, Alberta, happened to be directly behind me. Wow. When it happened. And immediately was on the scene, taking care of me. The, the good volunteer fire department of Trochu, Alberta, arrived on the scene, took care of me. Fact is, they transported me, which probably isn't the right way to do it. It's probably not protocol. They transported me in the fire truck to the hospital so I wouldn't have to pay the ambulance bill. They wanted to make sure I was okay. They stayed with me, stayed with me, 21 stitches in the top of my head. And uh, yeah. It, I, I almost didn't live. I mean, sincerely, almost didn't live, uh, but thankfully made it. And now here we are launching NTB on the 29th, right? It, it, isn't that crazy? I, I talked to you, I think, once when that happened. And I was all excited. Okay, we'll talk to this American guy about his new network. And then that night, she's like, Chevy said to me the pictures. I'm like, oh, my God. He's like, is he going to live? I, it was ugly. That was a bad one. That was um, ugly, man. But you know what? You, you, you pulled through in that same resilience you talked about. Uh, Chevy, I'll let you get in here in a second. Uh, one of my favorite was things say, was talking about the gut check in training camp because uh, training camps are hard and it's hard for everybody. And it takes a certain mindset to rise above it and say, I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for a reason. And I have no choice but to figure this out and keep moving. Uh, it's the same thing with you with this network. So you get you get this nasty car wreck, but you did you didn't you didn't quit in fact you escalated you sped up after that uh yeah you know i i thought it was important to keep going fact is i trained i trained i snapped uh with the high school kids there in trostu a day later a day and a half later but you know it is the it is similar to the journey of this network you know i, I saw rubio just threw in a chat there he's there been there from the beginning he's one of the, uh, the first content creator that we had on the network and you know, think about this uh, for all of you in the audience. There's no millionaire, billionaires behind this. There's no hedge fund. There's no investment bankers. There's no media moguls. This is a television network being launched by regular people. Regular people launching a television network because we are tired of seeing our fathers, our sons, our nephews, our Amen. uncles, and our brothers die. In the time that we talked tonight, boys, 145 men across North America, United States and Canada, will attempt suicide, 145 an hour. And the majority of them are in their middle age. And so F that, F that, enough, uh, enough. And I, 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 there's so many of us that have been affected by this, either because we've gone through it or we know and love those who have gone through it and sadly made a choice that they couldn't come back from. So I think the spirit of this thing is that we are planting our flag in the sand. We say we're gonna have a network that's gonna inspire, that's gonna educate people, that's gonna support and celebrate people and inspire many, 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 many people to step away from the precipice. Your show is on the tip of the spear. And I, I mean that sincerely. Your show is on the tip of the spear because it's your show that gets guys to show up. You're funny. You're engaging. You're dynamic. You know, your storytelling is wonderful. 
and you have thoughtful, deep, meaningful conversation. People show up. And then once they get here, we build trusting relationship with those young, with those gentlemen. And, and when we build trusting relationships, then we can talk about things like, hey, how you doing? You all right? You okay today? You know, if you go to our front of our website, you go to ngbn.tv, you go to the front of our website, right there in the middle of the website, it says, connect with a man, men in your area. And you can literally go to a map and you can find who's working out tomorrow morning that you could go meet in the park and they will stand with you and they'll listen to your story and they'll be there for you. So no television network in the history of media has ever tried to do what we're doing. Create a community, support that community, and in our essence, help people realize that we're better with them here. And that's, that's what we're doing. Well, you, Ian, know, you know what I love about that, Ian, is, is today in Canada, it's Bell Let's Talk Day. And that started, you know, several years ago to bring awareness. But it's it's really become, I, I'm glad they're doing it. But it's a hashtag and it's something you put up on your social media for one day. Since we've been uh, involved with you on this network, and we've really gotten into some really good conversations with people, both on the air and online, um, what used to be the subject that you still don't lead with it at a party. But when you ask a man, hey, how are you doing? How is, how is this affecting you? Or you, you give an opening. Guys are talking, Ian, and we've got to keep that going. we got to take it out of the dark caves, the dark basements that we used to feel so alone in and open it up because it, all you have to do is bring up the subjects and every one of us have been affected by it. And I see more men willing to talk and offer their help to guys that are in need. And that's what I want to be. I want to be a shining ambassador of this mission that you started those years ago. And uh, you know what? At, at a still Chevy Nasty, I just want to have some fun on the road too, right? Yeah. Right. Hey, Sheldon, sure. let, me, let me jump in here because on your note, Sheldon, on Ian's note, we did have a fantastic uh, uh, interaction. In fact, Sheldon, you said you don't lead with that at a party, but that made someone late to a party. We were at an event yeah. last week, and um, Ian, you were the keynote speaker at this event. Uh, it was a power networking group. Our good sponsors at Dream Reach Achieve, Bruno Lindia, put it on. You were speaking about your experience here in Canada, but you showed up late for the very thing we're talking about tonight, for the very thing that this network does. Uh, yeah, tell us what happened. So we got a phone call. We got a phone call, and I, I have to be mindful of names and titles and things. Yeah, so no I'll, names, no I'll names. be fairly general. We got a phone call out of the state of Texas. A lady had called. And she said, we have a, a player. She runs a big football league, semi-pro football league. And she says, um, we have a player that's in crisis. And she said this, and I'm <clears throat> so proud of this. When I found out what was going on, I thought of you guys. She thought of NGBN. Think about that. Yeah. She thought of a television network for help. What can I do for you, ma'am? He's in crisis. Is there anything that you can do? I said, where is he? And she told me the town. I said, you know what? I think there is probably something we can do. Let me make a couple phone calls. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we're partnered with an organization called F3. They have hundreds of thousands of men around the world. It's a, it's a group that uses physical fitness to kind of bond men together. And they, they call it a circle of trust. And they, they talk and they share after a good hard workout. So I thought, you know what? I bet you there's some circle of trust guys or there's some F3 guys uh, in in Texas that could form that circle of trust around this guy that was having a mental health crisis. So I called North Carolina. North Carolina calls San Antonio. And within two hours, two and a half hours, there's somebody on their way to support that young man. Now stop and think about that. That's a television network. Yes. But it's not a television network. It's a community that's coming together that's saying, this is unacceptable. We will no longer have this. We're going to destigmatize the conversation, as you said, Nasty. We're going to provide meaningful information and tangible tools, and we're going to rally around men and help them realize and feel, feel, because it's not a hashtag. You're right. Feel that they have value, they have worth, and that they may have made a bad decision in life, finances, relationships, drug, alcohol, whatever, but we're not going to allow them to make the one decision you can't come back from. Great story. And that's, that's this network at, uh, th that's the heart of this network. And that's what we try to do every day while having some fun. Like you said, educate, inspire, entertain, man, guys, we've got, we've got it all here, but that's 
a real life example of this thing working and I love it. And that just gives me goosebumps every time I hear it, man. And, and, and you know what? On the 29th, as you guys have been talking about, we're going to be live on Roku and Apple TV and other apps and some more will come after that. And, and we're going to be a full network. We got classic movies. We got live sports. We're going to be at the Super Bowl, right? We're going to be at the Super Bowl, 30 hours from Radio Row at the Super Bowl. So it's your traditional network with a purpose, with a real purpose. And this has not been announced publicly, and I know we got to get out, but let me announce this because it's groundbreaking. The last weekend of March, Saturday, the last weekend of March, we're going to train 100,000 men and how to deal with someone that's having a mental health crisis. Yeah. Through the efforts of many people like Chris Rubio, Brian Jodas, and others that you mentioned earlier, we have secured a gentleman who was the number one guy in the United States military that they had called upon to reduce the suicide rate in the U.S. military. And he was highly effective. And he's got training programs. And we're going to live stream, live broadcast all across North America, around the world, into Canada as well. Uh, a training. You know, we all got trained in CPR. Of course, Randy, you do that because you're a professional, but Sheldon and I took it just so we could be somebody got in a, had a problem. We could jump in. Well, now we're going to teach similar training when it comes to a mental health crisis. What would I do if a buddy of mine was having a mental health crisis? What would I say? Who would I call? What would I listen for? This will all be available in this training. It's free. We want to train 100,000 men in one weekend to respond to a buddy who's going through a mental health crisis. That one thing alone will reduce the suicide rate amongst middle-aged men in Canada and the United States. So this is the first time we've announced it. Stay tuned for more details on that. You're going to be able to watch it on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, mobile devices, and social media. And uh, you guys are a big part of all of this. Your show... And the two of your personality and leadership are key elements to this network being successful. And I sure appreciate you having me on. Well, we, we love being part of the network. We, we love doing our show. Sheldon and I mentioned it last week, like doing this show was a way for us to connect two dudes that were good friends, uh, that, that, you know, life and time kind of separated us. This brought us together. Uh, um, this shows for us. But it's also for everyone that listens, you know, live at 11 p.m., it's not ideal. And we are going to overtime, Sheldon, despite how you don't want to go to overtime. You said we weren't. We're going to run this next four minutes to get to the top of the hour. And then we're going to hit overtime because we got too much going on. And unless you want to cut your segment short, Sheldon, you got a good segment coming up. But what, what I want to say is being part of this network has been such an amazing experience from where Sheldon and I were uh, a year a, a year and two months ago, having a coffee and saying, you know what, Sheldon, we got it. This time we really got to get the band back together. Not talk about it, not say, man, we should do it. We got to do it. And we, 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 we were in our own way for so many years, like hesitate. Oh, we can't do this. We did it. Season zero. We got through that. We're here right now. Now we're once a week. We're live. We're on this network that's about to launch that's going to save men's life through education, inspiration, humor, sports, pop culture, you name it. We're here for you people. So, Ian, before we let you go, you mentioned it before. You said this is a network for men, by men. It's not backed by a hedge fund. There's not a billionaire Bruce Wayne throwing us boatloads of money. Okay. What does this network need? Like if, if we have someone that might have some money that didn't play in the CFL. Maybe, maybe a former big time NFL or watching this game, maybe lost a teammate, maybe saying, you know what? I could get behind this. What do we need to get to where we want to go? Because, you know, it's nice to have a mission. It's nice to talk about saving men's lives, but you know what? We got to keep the lights on. We got to keep the Wi-Fi going so that my sons can play Fortnite while I'm broadcasting. We got to, we got to, we got to get to the Super Bowl so we can meet more people. We got to do these things that take money. So what does a network need? If we were having the number, one, the number one thing that we need right now is advertisers and sponsors to stand with us. It's as simple as that. It is a, it is a television network. Uh, we're trying to make it sustainable so that we're not just here and gone. So we have tremendous advertising opportunities. We have tremendous advertising rates. 
regional companies can now have a global reach on our network. And they are the kind of rates that you would pay for a full page ad in a local newspaper. You can get a couple thousand commercials on our network. Well, that's because you don't have anybody watching. We have 3 million views last month, 3 million views. And we weren't even on those platforms yet. We got 40 plus shows, talented people, intelligent people from, as, as uh, Randy said, from pop culture to sports to meaningful information from doctors and trained professionals. It's a phenomenal buffet, as many say, Rubio says, a buffet, an offering. So right now we need it, simply put, we need advertisers to stand with us that believe in the mission and want to fuel this engine and take pride in knowing that their dollars of support move somebody from the precipice of a choice that they will never be able to come back from. Well, we hope if you're listening out there, one of our fans, one of our friends, someone that's joining us from the first time, we hope you heard this message because it is important. Like we said, uh, we're, we're live right now, YouTube, Facebook, uh, um, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. Uh, but we are going to be on all connected networks. January 29th is sneak peek. We want to get 10,000 downloads. We, if you got a device, a, a, a phone, a, a television, a, a connected uh, laptop, uh, iPad, we want you to download it, okay? We want you to download it. We want you to be with us on this journey because it's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be great. And speaking of the journey, we're going to have to get out. Ian, we're going to thank you. We're going to get to that commercial. And then we're going to come back and Sheldon's going to wrap it up with some nasty thoughts. Great job, boys. Thank you for having me. Are you a business owner or sales professional and want to build and maintain a peak performing premium pricing sales team? Are you and your team finding it difficult to work with clients you want to at the premium prices you deserve? The Professional Sales and Execution Certificate Program will dismiss the sales myths that have limited you and your team and stalled your complete company's growth. Learn all about our PSE secret weapons, including the 982 premium presentation that helps build a high ticket repeat sales network. These absolutely dead simple secret weapons allow you and your team to be yourself and utilize extremely powerful ways to decide which clients you want to work with. If you're ready for a high energy and high power training session, that will completely transform you and your team into the envy of your industry, simply click here and register and book now. Get started on your premium pricing, high ticket sales execution journey now. Attention gentlemen of distinction. Introducing NGBN.TV, the television network designed exclusively for men in their 40s, 50s and 60s. Your go-to destination for entertainment that speaks to you, inspires you, and celebrates the incredible journey of manhood. And here's the exciting news. NGBN.TV is coming to Roku, Apple TV, Amazon, and your favorite mobile devices. Whether you're a sports enthusiast, seeking self-improvement, or just looking for a good laugh, NGBN.TV has got you covered. Entertainment, inspiration, brotherhood. Coming soon to Roku, Apple TV, Amazon, and mobile devices. NGBN.TV, where men thrive. I came to win, yeah, I came to win. I came to win, yeah, I came to win. I came to win, yeah, I came to win. The legendary Ian Hill, eh? that guy's something else, Chef. I'll tell you, when when we got out of pro sports, the first thing that happens is you get. All these people reaching out to you on LinkedIn, whatever, uh, with an opportunity. or and, and you learn to become a little bit jaded. And you learn to really, um, you know, kind of guard yourself before you give a guy your time. Because you just don't know what they're going to try to sell you. Um, but I'll tell you, Ian Hill and what he's done with his life. And it, it's a real deal. Like, even before. So I'm from small town Saskatchewan. And I've been in countless small small towns across Western Canada. 
Uh, Ian has honestly been coast to coast. He have pictures of his kids at the prime minister's chair. He's been to more Canadian. He knows more about Canadiana than I do. Anything that he gets into, he throws himself into 100%. And uh, guys, those of you guys that are listening, I'll tell you what, uh, he means it. If there's anything that you need, reach out to the network. If we don't have the resources for you, we will find them because we are real people behind the scenes. And uh, Ian, Bu Ian Hill, the guy's a beauty chef. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad uh, we had him on because, you know, our show, we always say we're not the scores, we're the story. And if we didn't know Ian, so, you know, if, if we didn't know him, if we didn't meet him, if he didn't flip his car and come back again and get us on the network, we would have read about this 57-year-old long snapper that's trying to get into college football to break the world record for being the oldest guy so that when he runs down field on a Division I game broadcast on NBC on a Saturday afternoon and some 40, 50, 60-year-old guy who may be thinking of doing the same decision Ian did on his 50th birthday might see that and reset. We would have called that guy and said, we need this guy on our show because he's a great story. But not only is he a great story, uh, he's a great guy. Uh, the network that we are on, uh, we owe it to him and his mission. Like you said, he threw himself into it. But you know what we're throwing ourselves into? Sheldon's favorite part of the show, overtime. You said we were going to stay on target. You said we weren't going to do it. You tried. Or, or well, you said you were going to try, and here we are. It's uh, an hour and two minutes past the the show start time. Uh, we've got overtime. Sheldon wants his beauty sleep. So should we get to the nasty thoughts? Or Let's should... jump right. Yeah, you know what? Let's jump right into the nasty thoughts, Chef. And actually, you know what? You could have uh, timed it better. The, uh, this week's nasty thoughts is something I came across this week that relates exactly what we're talking about uh, now. What it is, is I was reading this article where they bring up this concept of sleep divorce. And Jenna, you can go ahead and throw that up there. Sleep divorce. Well, what is it? Well, that's when married couples that have been together for years, uh, they, they function as a married couple, raising kids, cooking dinners, going to work, paying the bills, going on vacation. But at night, they sleep in separate beds. And I thought to myself, what a terrible connotation to calling that a sleep divorce. You know what? You know what I call that? I call that. You know, when, when, when you first have kids and the house is full all the time and your wife goes off to her sisters and takes the kids and you have your house to yourself for what, for two days. Oh my God. Is that not the best free feeling in the world? I've got my own house. What about when you get your own bed? I don't think of that as a negative connotation. I, I think it's a fantastic idea. We spend a third of our life sleeping and I don't think you necessarily have to always have somebody in your bed. We do. Right. But when we had kids, you know, sometimes man is sleeping with the kids. I'm sleeping with the kids. I miss my bed, Chef. I don't well, think it's a negative concept at all. I, I don't think it's a negative concept. I think the name is a little bit weird. Like they could, you know, they could find a hat because you listen, I'm divorced, uh, you know, and that's there's a connotation with divorce that people don't associate with a positive thing. But there's got to be a better way to to, to, to frame it. But. For the people listening, any of you kind of do that? I know Jenna, Jenna, um, uh, she wrote in. Uh, she did that for 10 years because she couldn't sleep with the person. They had the TVs on. Maybe, maybe they snore. Jeez, sure. I, I, you know, um, so so if you're, if you're listening, uh, could you get down with the sleep the divorce concept? Now, I don't have the same issue as you because I, I don't live with anyone besides my kids. My, my girlfriend lives in Red Deer, which is an hour and a half away. We see each other mostly on the weekends because we have kids, work, and life. But in our situation, Brittany and I, when we sleep together, which is totally opposite of what we've experienced our entire life, we are like we are like full spoon all night, which is so weird because <laughs> I used to hate being touched in bed. Like I'm tossing and turning. And, and flipping around i'm snoring if i lay on well, my back you're, you're you're i was your roommate on the road for years i know this yeah right? and, uh, and and she was the same she didn't want anyone to touch her but and but yet when we get together it it, it it works but i i could see how it doesn't work you got someone that that bugs you while you like sleep is the most important you know for me it's five hours maybe some people eight to ten hours of your day it's your rest it's your recovery it's your hormone balance it's everything you need to function properly and if the person next to you disturbs you that is a problem and you mentioned it you and i sheldon we were on the road 
you know, 2005 to 2007, we slept separately. And yeah. look at us. Look at our relationship. 20 years, we sleep in separate houses. And we're stronger than ever, Chef. Stronger than we, ever. We Ernie and birded ourselves to this yeah. position that we're in today. <laughs> it works. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Sheldon, want to come over and sleep on my couch? No, I don't, <laughs> Chevy. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, that's literally what we do. But you yeah, know, no, you know, the funny thing to me was back in the day when we used to be on Sportsnet 960, the fan and broadcasting, everybody always assumed that we we're roommates and we had this like, uh, that we live together in the same house and, yes. and we just did everything together. The truth is we hardly see each other now. Now, since we've got the show back on, honestly, I love it, brother, because we do hang out a lot more than we used to do. Right. But uh, yeah, no, it uh, is awesome. Hey, you know what? Great comment from Michael Hunsinger from MD and the chef. He says, no, thank you. My wife is too hot. You know what? Your wife is hot. Michael. Yeah. And I will say the same thing. My Brittany's hot. Sheldon, your Amanda's hot. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I think I like my old coach Casey Crean said. I think we all all kicked our coverage on that one, right? So absolutely, absolutely. Well, speaking of Coach uh, Crean, well, we're not going to speak of him, but it kind of shifts gears to the CFL. Sheldon, yeah. uh, there was a news story out this week, and and uh, uh, Arlen Bruce the third, who was a CFL uh, uh, All Star and maybe Hall of Famer. I'm not sure. His great, son, he was a great. He was a great. Yeah, he was a great really. CFL. Great Arlen Bruce the fourth. Uh, so his son, uh, Iowa state alum, uh, no, Iowa, 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 Iowa alum. Uh, but, but there's an Iowa state connection to this. He recently signed a deal with the Edmonton Elks. I believe that was in December. And this week, the deal was nullified by the CFL. Yep. Now we're talking about, uh, uh, second chances here, but before we talk about second chances, the reason the deal will. The CFL doesn't say why the deal was nullified, nor do the Elk, nor does the league. But the backstory is, is Arlen Bruce IV, while playing at uh, Iowa, uh, was investigated along with several other athletes, I believe 17 athletes from Iowa and Iowa State. And Iowa State. In connection with gambling offenses, to which Arlen Bruce IV pled guilty. Uh, he was uh, fined. And obviously suspended the NCAA suspended that they have a policy against uh, gambling. There, there was some gambling, some bets placed, and it, it gets a little murky. His uncle was placing bets with his email account, um, but under his name. And it was in some of the games he played against or played in, and uh, he lost his eligibility. He tried to transfer to yeah. uh, OSU. Uh, but never was allowed to play or practice. He spent a year there. Coach Gundy gave him a second chance, but the NCAA didn't. So he winds up signing with Edmonton, thinking, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to move on, kickstart my CFL career. Uh, uh, contract nullified. But Sheldon, am I going to ask you this? Before we get to the second chance thing, you know, with the proliferation of sports gambling, more so now than it's ever been, especially coming out of COVID, like sports betting, is everywhere. In fact, even our network uh, will be announcing some partnerships. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Some sponsorships. You know, partnerships. just like just like uh, networks have uh, beer sponsorships. You know, there are they are some of the vices, but we understand that an athlete shouldn't be betting on their own sports, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. And this really goes back to the time that like we played in a different era than today, right? Back when we were playing in the nineties in college and, and amateur sports uh, and even professional sports, betting was, was seen as something kind of dark and seedy, right? The only place you could bet was in Vegas and, and maybe in Atlantic city. Um, and, and it was something that if you were betting outside of those places, you couldn't talk about. Uh, and because of that, it was all organized crime and the criminal underworld. And yeah, back back in those days, it was, hey, let me know uh, who's injured on your roster this week, right? So we were taught from a very early stage of our careers, just stay out of sports betting altogether. But Chev, I mean, it's 2024. The whole world's changed. Now, betting uh, is something that has been uh, has been legal, standardized, it's, it's, it's regulated across our country, uh, and, and I, I think the United States as well. Um, that it's no longer a taboo subject. It's like saying, if I go for a drink after work, I have to be quiet about it. No, we're not in prohibition. You can do whatever you want. You're a grown man. But the number one thing I think we're missing in the message for these young college athletes, you have to stay away. You 
have to, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can't associate with people that that do it. You can't have, uh, you can't stay over at people's houses that are known sports betters. You've got to stay away from it for the integrity of the game and your own reputation. But but it's everywhere, Sheldon. It's like, you know, every major sporting league is profiting off of betting and they're selling it, right? How do you how do you insulate the athletes from that? I mean, we know the Pete Rose thing, right? Pete Pete Rose yeah. for you know, forever banned from the baseball hall of fame because he bet he bet on sports, he, but but this is not the Pete Rose era. You know, uh, betting is as normalized as drinking with your buddies. I will take it a step further. Had Pete Rose not bet on his own team, allegedly, wh- what was Pete Rose's number? Do you remember? Was it like number four or 13 or something like that? Right now, there would be a bet 13. Uh, yeah, or, absolutely. And you I'm know what I mean? He would be celebrated as a great ambassador of the pastime of, of sports betting. Well, I'm surprised no one's picked him up to do something like that just because they could take advantage of that, you know, almost like the notorious hero of the sports betting world, right? I mean, you look this year uh, and the last couple of years, we've seen Austin Matthews appear on on uh, on uh, betting sites in Toronto. Wayne Gretzky, George Wayne St. Pierre, like ev- everyone's there selling it. In, in fact, uh, I was reading this article about Ireland Bruce the Fourth, and he said gambling could be really addictive. It, it could consume you. And, and he's saying, it is advertised in the NCAA, yeah. so it's kind of a, 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 a ironic of them to take that approach, um, you know. But he's saying, yeah, it, it's a huge thing, and it's big in colleges now. I went to college a long time ago when this didn't exist. I guarantee you that in college campuses across the United States, kids are making money off of sports betting, and guess what? Their friends are on the teams that they're betting on. So you don't you, like. Iowa State and Iowa and Arlen Bruce are the tip of that spear. They got yeah, which, hot. by the way, I was kind of pissed off about that because NCAA really did go after some smaller markets. And yeah, we're Division One teams, but you didn't see uh, Auburn, Clemson, LSU, Michigan. Uh, you didn't see Seattle. You didn't see any of those teams targeted. They really did go to the obscure, smaller populations, which I have a bit of a problem with. Right? There's obviously an activist FBI guy that wanted to go after him. When I'm sure. What they did is going on across the country. I'm sure of it, right? So, so, so let's move on. So, so, so we know it's wrong. Even he says, "Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Distance yourself." We're getting some good comments from Rubio there, uh, saying that you could try to insulate the athletes. Uh, they, they will not insul- insulate themselves due to social media. Uh, we had a much easier. Uh, because not everything was public, and I'm, yeah. I'm really paraphrasing because I can't read. But um, you know, he paid his price. Uh, you know, he paid his price yeah. and his, he, col- his collegiate career and in his collegiate career. He was, you know, there was a coach, uh, Gundy that was going to give him a second shot. Mike Gundy and OSU was going to give him a second shot, but the NCAA didn't. So it ended his, sh- he comes to the CFL. Now the CFL has historically been known as a second chance league. You think about guys that have come up that you played with that might've had some sort of criminal issue. So Lawrence Phillips, a bunch of guys, right? Uh, um, and and the CFL has been a second chance league for some guys, and some guys took that second chance and they've changed their life. Yeah. Okay, they, you, you're not making generational wealth up here, but they've they've come up to Canada. They found a better way. They found a different lifestyle, and they were able to 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 do something with that second chance. And here's a kid that a team offered him a second chance. He signed the contract. The CFL voids it. Uh, Is that the right call in this case? No, it's absolutely the wrong call. It goes against everything that this league is. And and it goes against Western society. I am allowed to make a mistake if I'm caught and if I'm tried and if I'm, you know, judged, I'm going to have certain repercussions. But I don't see any way. I don't, I haven't heard anything about what he's done that says that man should not be allowed to play professional football in another country i'm not sure what the issue is there but interestingly enough though they do do, do you want to do you want to go with the tinfoil hats and talk some conspiracies here right now let's do it well who's your overtime it's your overtime the 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 great arlen bruce the third now arlen bruce the third is actually yeah like you heard it in the nfl a lot of guys going back and suing the league over concussions isn't he not involved in some direct or class action lawsuit with the cfl right now he was in fact he, he was uh, the only uh, member to take CFL to court. And I think what happened was he was suing the CFL 
for um I, I think his position was that the CFL knew about concussions and knew the damage they could do, but they did. So, they, so did we. So did we. Yeah, I, I, I get. The, I get the issue, right? I get the, the ruling. Issue. The ruling. Uh, the, the ruling court in BC uh, overturned it, and so he couldn't take it to the Supreme Court, I believe. And and they didn't. They didn't. They threw it out because it wasn't even uh, ruled on in BC. So, uh, yeah, maybe there's some that, bad that, blood. My, my point is: is it personal? Is there some? Maybe. Like, like I don't understand why you can't let this guy come up and play. Maybe, but, but, but. but the CFL, this is not the first time the CFL does this, right? So, so a few years ago, uh, Art Browse, uh, head coach at Baylor, Baylor. for many yep. years, very successful coach, but uh, there was a, a, a sexual uh, misconduct scandal. In fact, I, I'm not sure if it was a rape situation. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to quote the scandal. But long story short. Uh, he protected a lot of his players, insulated his players. He really mishandled a lot of the complaints against his players. Uh, and it came to light. He was yep. fired from Baylor. Well, where does he come? To the CFL. Yep. He comes to the CFL uh, right in the midst of their diversity is strength campaign, which they were running a few years ago. Signs with Hamilton Tiger Cats uh, really quickly. The headlines show up that, you know, about where he's coming from and his history. CFL voided his contract. Did Art Bryles deserve a second chance? Because he's coaching somewhere in Italy right now in uh, Division II. Uh, 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 I don't know where he's, the Milano Seaman. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, I don't know where he is, but he ain't in North America coaching football. His his career was done basically because of that. So what he's do you think on that The uh, Gelfi Fire Ends, an American football team <laughs> located in Florence, Italy. So he got his second chance. But Chef, that's that's totally different. Like like when you're a coach of a college team and you're responsible for the development and mentorship and making these men better people, right? I mean, I know your job description is to win games, but honestly, in our society, there is a certain expectation that you do the right thing when you're charged with our youth, especially when you're getting into sexual assault allegations and and covering things up. I mean, that's, we're so past that right now. Um, the lesson should have been learned. And I, I think his penance is going to have to be a little more than a guy that just went out there and was betting on sports. Yeah. So right and, here, again, we have I a don't picture. know the whole story, but, but the, I, I consider covering up sexual assaults is completely different as, is betting. Yeah, no, or you're no, absolutely. using your email address, right? You, yeah. You can't compare the two. Yeah, no, I've absolutely that you, you, you definitely you definitely have to uh, put it in front of a few people with some wisdom and say, well, listen, in this case. But you know what, Sheldon, we've seen some guys with some histories given a second chance in the CFL and have made the most of it. So uh, you never know. But yeah, uh, I would like to see the young guy get a chance. I think he learned from it. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I don't. I don't know if he did or not, but I, I don't think that the punishment fits the crime. He yeah, already paid yeah. for the crime. He's now there's a professional team that wants to pay him to make a living, or even just a chance to try out and bring that family legacy back to the CFL. I'm fine with it. Maybe he doesn't even make the team. Maybe he turns into be a, a guy that you can't count on. I don't know what this story is, but I think you got to give the young man a chance, and he's got my vote. So he's got your vote. Yeah, I guess he's got mine. But you know. Uh, we're here. We're going to wrap it up pretty quick. Um, we're the NGBN.TV network. We're Chevy and Nasty. You're Nasty. I'm Chevy. It's the ride. Uh, we had the great Ian Hill on before. Uh, the network uh, is going to go live into sneak peek on all connected devices on January 29th. That means if you have a Roku TV uh, or device, you could put it on. If you have Amazon Fire, um, Apple TV, we are going to be there. I have, uh, actually checked it out. It looks pretty sharp. Uh, all our stuff's going to be there, but you can also find us on our usual places. So if you go on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, we're going to be there too. Um, and just this, a reminder, this is free. Like there's no, there's no cost for this. This television network is yeah. really, we're using Roku and these other platforms as, as our platforms. You just download the app and then you've got it on your phone. You got it on your TV. And what we've done now with some of the sneak peeks is we're downloading it on all of our devices. I've got it on my iPad, uh, my phone, my kids watch the show and I've yeah. got it on, uh, on, on our, on like three TVs. So yeah. Yeah. So it's awesome. And, and one thing Ian mentioned is that as the network grows, so every, each week we get announcement, but 
uh, NGBN TV network is going to the Super Bowl in a couple of weeks. They're going to be on Radio Row. Uh, we're going to have programming from Tuesday to Thursday. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, uh, you know, thanks, Rubio. Our, our man Rubio says, great show. Uh, thanks so much. You're doing an awesome job. I, I listened to Rubio's show this week. It was fantastic. Uh, I got to get in some of those decade shows because I love I love that show. show. Uh, so a so, um, little bit of a love in there. But uh, – the, the network is going to Super Bowl. It's official. We're not going. We're going to be joining them from Canada. Uh, just a few commitments out here prevented us from traveling this year. But the network is going to be live from Radio Row. Uh, there's going to be all kinds of content, all kinds of uh, athletes uh, showing up. And uh, if you're going to want to download the app, you're going to want to be tuning in to all the different shows, AC, Rubio, Jodis, Sideline Sports, all these guys are going to be running content all day long from Las Vegas, Radio Row, and GBN Network is going to be there. But before we get the Super Bowl, Sheldon, before we figure out who is going to be playing in that game that we're going to talk about, we got to back up, come back to this weekend's game. We got the AFC and the yeah. NFC conference games. These are going to be the last thing we talk about tonight before we wrap it up here in overtime. Sheldon's favorite. I need like a bell or something. To, you know, I got, I got a, well, I got a, I got a drum. We're going to talk about AFC uh, championship game um, next week. Sheldon, it's going to be the Baltimore Ravens. It's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know if we got our little graphic. There you go. Now, when they talked about last week, Mahomes versus Josh Allen, they were talking about. Tom Brady versus uh, not Peyton Manning. They were talking about Tom Brady versus, I don't know, some guy. But this week, this week's game, if you want the modern day Tom Brady versus uh, 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 Peyton Manning, that's what this game is. Patrick Mahomes. I, I, would, I wouldn't go that Jackson. far. I mean, like. Uh, Come on, man! You saw once, once in a decade, once in a generation, you get the uh, Peyton Manning and, and uh, uh, Tom Brady. Now, certainly, Patrick Mahomes is at that level because he's been there uh, and and he's won multiple, right? He's been there uh, all the, his whole career. He's, yeah, he's, he's been there the his next, whole career. So, I, the what I'm saying, I, what I'm saying is, this should probably, uh, this could easily be the Super Bowl matchup, but it's not going to be right because that's not how the conference is aligned. Um, but I, I think it's, it's good. And I'll tell you, Baltimore impressed me. They came out. That defense was on fire. They absolutely controlled the line of scrimmage, time of possession. They ran the ball. They passed the ball up and down against the, the Texans. Um, but that's exactly what they should have done. To me, I still think that Baltimore is the best-looking, performing team that I've seen so far where they've just dominated. But you know what I'm going to fall back to? Back to the Tom Brady, Peyton Manning. Even though I'm getting a little fatigues of Patrick Mahomes, I can't bet against the guy. I made that mistake for like three years with Brady. Uh, until you beat Mahomes, he's he's the best, and he can guide that team down the field. So I, I got to say it's going to be Kansas City all the way. Well, Sheldon, I'm looking at it like this. Um, Patrick Mahomes, I, first of all, I'm not a KC hater. I'm not a lover, but I do respect their game. I respect what Andy Reid has built. I respect the players they brought in. I respect how they win. I respect that they've done it year in, year out. They've got the formula. I lost a little bit of respect for Patrick Mahomes after they played the Bills during the regular season when the Chiefs messed up on a play. They went offside on a play that wound up being pretty spectacular and could have changed the game. They got flagged, and Patrick Mahomes blamed everyone but – the people in that locker room who executed poorly. They talked about the refs robbing the fans. They, and I really saw, yes, he's emotional, but I really, he little he entitled, down, little entitled. Yeah. He dropped down for me. He, he dropped down for me a little bit, but that being said, I, I wish I could pick against you, Sheldon. I wish I could, like, I would like to, I really like Lamar Jackson. I mean, he is impressive. Yeah. hundred percent. He takes, he is the one guy. And, and that's why I think this is the, the Mahomes Peyton Manning, uh, 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 the modern day version because he could take a team on his shoulders and win. He did that last weekend. He got two two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns. I mean, he's got uh, three thousand six hundred and seventy eight yards this year, eight hundred and twenty one yards rushing. Like he is the weapon. But that being said, early on in the season, 
when people were wondering if the Chiefs were for real, I said one thing. I said, even though they're struggling a little bit, they struggled against the Broncos. They had a hard time beating a couple of teams. I said, the Chiefs are always going to be the Chiefs. And they are still my Super Bowl pick. And they got their lucky charm. How can you lose when you got the Swifties in the building? They they got that locked down. Like, are that, you putting Jason Kelsey is now one of the Swifties? Is that what you're saying, or absolutely? I'm putting I'm, I'm hey, putting hey, Zach, you, Zach do you, do you know who else was in that press box? Sorry, I'm taking yeah. this off a little bit. Do you know who else was in that press box with him? Yes, I just said Zach Caleros. Zach Caleros, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I sorry, I didn't hear that, but uh, yeah, yeah, Zach Caleros is the Swiftie. Well, See, even Jenna's a Swiftie. Even with, uh, Jenna, Jenna says, go Swifties. Uh, and who else says, you know, and what, what does AC say? He says, that AC's was still up on the West Coast. Wow. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for listening in. I always listen to your first half of your show. Then I got turned you know. down because I'm writing poetry. But we love AC. You got to check his show out. If you're here watching our show tonight, watch AC's, which always comes on before us because it's a great show. He's the smoothest man. That's on the where radio. we get all our takes from. We just watch him and just copy. Yeah, him we just watch show. him. And we copy him. But so, so we're both with the Chiefs. Let's move on to the <laughs> NFC game. Okay, unless, unless the caveat, if they can shut down, if those linebackers can take Kelsey out of the game, then uh, then Mahomes going to have a long day. But the same thing, I'm not willing to bet against them right now. I see a path uh, for the Ravens to win. I just can't bet against them. Yeah, Next, yeah, same with me. Next NFC Championship game, we got the Detroit. Lions from Motor City going to San Fran to take on Sheldon's. Mo you know, Sheldon, back in the day, you had a favorite guy when we were in the CFL. His name was Jesse. They're brothers. They're brothers. No, no, no. It was Jesse Lumston. That was your oh. man crush. He was Jesse Lumston. We're going to get him on the show one day. He was your man crush. Yeah, he was. yeah he was. Your man crush, your modern day man crush is Brock Purdy. Okay, uh, now you forgot one thing before Jesse Lumsden in the CFL was Troy Davis and his bro little brother, Darren Davis. Yes. Troy Davis took second in the Heisman behind Peyton Manning back in the day, even though he was the first guy to ever rush back-to-back 2,000-yard -back seasons. Iowa State's always constantly overlooked. And that's my thing with Brock Purdy. I'm not calling him a man crush, but I watched every game. I found ways to even watch the games that weren't televised. This guy is something special. His composure and the way he approaches every game, you can't phase him. He doesn't show uh he doesn't show it when he's down. He doesn't show it when he's up. He just shows up to play. And it's not because he's a baseline boring guy. He is so competitive, but he knows that the game is one up here. And the whole game, he's just trying to figure it out. And because of that, I'll tell you what, I gotta go with Brock Purdy and I gotta go with the Niners. I and, and the Lions have been a great story, Chef. A great story. And I know for the sake of the country, it would be an even better story if they got to the Super Bowl. But as good, I don't see a path. You know, Sheldon, I said it earlier in the show that um the 49ers they made a statement when they went to Philadelphia and they layeth the smacketh down on the Eagles and Jalen's hurts. And then they laid the blueprint for the rest of the NFL to do the same. And Rubio says it makes him uncomfortable that Nasty's man crush is not a lineman. Like I've, least, I've always I've always favored long snappers, Rubio. <laughs> at least my man crush is the rock. He's a former lineman. So I'm I'm kind of you know, it makes sense. But when I think about the 49ers. I think about the weapons they have. Now, we don't know if Debo Samuel's back for this weekend or not. Maybe we do. Maybe it was announced. They're dangerous. They are dangerous. And whenever I make picks, I always make picks. And I always, I, I usually pick favorites. I, I go for favorites. But I always pick one underdog. And even though Brock Purdy is the underdog in the NFL, the underdog qu quarterback, man, I am liking those Detroit Lions. Like, what they did. Uh, two weeks ago against the Rams, which are a very good team. The Rams, I think, are a better team than Green Bay was. Yeah, They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Matt Stafford's best. Like, Matt Stafford gave them Hall of Fame-type performance that game. And they went toe-to-toe -to -toe and they came out on top. And then they did what they had to do last week against a hot-handed Baker Mayfield. Like, the Bucks were slinging it. 
The Bucs were slinging it, and they were giving him a show. And then halfway through that game, the Lions decided that they were going to run that hot butter, that hot knife through butter, and they they handled them. So I'm I'm saying this, Sheldon. I said, you can have your Brock Purdy. You can have your Christian McCaffrey. You can have all of that. Detroit Lions are going to walk into San Fran, and they're going to head out with Eminem, and it's going to be a battle of the Eminem, the Slim Shadies, versus the Swifties. It's going to be the Swifty Shady Bowl, and I can't wait to see the Chiefs play the Lions in Super Bowl Sunday in a few weeks from now. That's oh, my you heard it here yeah. first, folks. I don't know. I don't know if I can agree with you, Chef, but uh, uh, it doesn't matter because we're only going to find out the game's got to be played on Sunday. Uh, but that's all the time we have for you guys right now. Chef, you got anything else? Any last comments? I just want to say thanks to everyone that showed up. I want to thank Ian Hill for showing up on our show and really putting a voice and a face to the mission that we're on because we're just a couple of fun guys like to have fun we talk about some serious stuff we talk some jokes we, we we do it all but when you have ian come on and tell us what that mission is and he really galvanized what it looks like for our listeners and our fans out there that's important so thanks ian hill thank you to jenna for for, for producing this show you're awesome i know you're under the weather i know you wanted to get to bed a half an hour ago just like Sheldon, but it is Sheldon's fault that we're in overtime because he loves the segment so much. So, and I want to thank Sheldon because I have fun every time I'm on the show. Uh, so thanks Sheldon. Thanks to all of you. Again, you can find us on all social platforms at Chevy and nasty, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, uh, YouTube. And uh, again, keep the comments coming. Keep it all going. Jenna's got one more comment for us before she goes. She needs to hear nasty's thoughts. You have any more thoughts, Sheldon? No, I, I don't have thoughts. Is that an old comment? Where'd that come from? I don't know. I just read it now. So anyhow. Oh, well, I need to hear nasty thoughts. My nasty thoughts. I already covered them. The sleep divorce. They make divorce sound like it's such a bad thing. But for me to have my own bed. In fact, you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to beat my wife to bed. And I'm going to sprawl on that double king bed. And I'm going to own that thing all to myself. And that's how we're going to wrap this thing up. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys all next Tuesday. Uh, same time, same place, same station. Talk to you then.